Hello, we are the Aurora team. My name is Josh Dupuy. My name is Andrew Pollan, and this is Kevin Lee. My name is Josh Fugate. And my name is Matthew Kirk. For our project, we made an Android app using the Kotlin programming language. To do this, we used Android Studio along with SQLite to code our app. And we also used XML to design all of the pages. In addition to that, we used three APIs, two of them from Edamom, and then to get recipes and also get food items. And then we also used a Yelp API to get restaurants. The problem our app is trying to solve is allowing the user to easily track their calorie and macronutrient intake. The, the user will, the user previously had to track this by hand or using complicated means. Our app has set out to um, create a way for the user to streamline the process and just ultimately track their calorie intake in a more fast and streamlined way. Now, as we enter, enter into the demo, we have what the screen that first opens when our app opens for the first time it is a welcome screen prompting the user to enter in some personal data. Now, the user will be prompted to enter in just um, details that will allow them to um, use the app to its fullest abilities. Um, we ask for things such as their name and their height, weight, and birthday, along with their activity level and fitness goal. This is ultimately to, this is ultimately to um, further enhance their experience and to really be able to calculate their macronutrients as one would want them to. Now our app allows the user to set a default profile, which is the profile that will open every time the user opens the app. And we also allow the user to enter in their current, their macronutrient goals, whatever those may be. And as we enter into the home screen, um, reading off a script written by Kevin Lee, um, the home screen has progress bars that allow the user to um, see their macronutrient and calorie intake in a more um, visually pleasing way. And the um, home screen also has a section where they will, the user will be able to see the, the foods that they have eaten today and a screen for the favorites. Now, these will be further fleshed out once food has been added to the database and as we move into the add item section of the app. In order for any user to keep track of their macronutrient and calorie intake, they must be able to actually log items to the database. As we navigate to the add item screen, you can see that there are three options, excuse me, two options. You can search for an item or add an item manually. There's a third option to click on previously added items that we will see later. First, we will search for an item. Our user wants to eat a banana. You can search for a banana in the text box, and now you will see scrollable results throughout the screen. So we will add the first result, a banana, and add that using the Add button. Now we see our recent item list here. One thing to note is that we have an item description screen for the user to see the more specific macronutrients of this item. We'll click on it to see the the name, calories, fat, carbohydrates, protein, and number of servings. Also on the add item screen, you can add a certain quantity of a given item. We will add five servings of this banana. Now we add that to the database and you can see that it is logged here. One way that our app differs from others of the same kind is that users are able to manually add items to the food log. Our user is going to add a grape to the food log and enter in 
the calories, fat, carbohydrates, and protein. These can be whole number or decimal values, and the calories are rounded to integers while the others are all rounded to one decimal place. Also, you can do any number of servings up to 99. Now we add this item to the database. And here, whenever you have enough items, you can continue to add or delete items that you have accidentally added, as you see there. And now we will see the calendar screen. So say the user wants to check previous uh, days where they had logged food and all the macronutrient totals along with that. Uh, they can go to the calendar screen where they are given a calendar that they can scroll through whatever date they may want to choose from. But say we choose today, click on. And we're given the date at the top and the total amount of calories consumed, as well as a macronutrient breakdown with the carbs, protein, and fat, and the total amount of those consumed. Now, if we want to see all the logged food that was eaten during the day, we have the logged food at the bottom where we have the food eaten and the quantity. So we see the banana and the total amount of calories for that was 89. And you're given the carbs, protein, and fat for each of those items. Um, so, oh, sorry. Uh, so the user can have that information and adjust their dietary intake from there based on their goals. And now onto the profile screen. Now, a big feature of our app, just need to reconnect real quick. A big feature of our app is having the ability to um, edit profiles and have more than one. So as we can see right here, we have the main profile screen that lists out some basic details about the user. Now, we have an edit macronutrients screen where a user is able to edit their macronutrients by themselves, or they can have the app do it for them. And the doing it for them just runs it through a standard algorithm for that. And um, the user has new revised uh, macronutrients that are seen as regular. Now we have the edit profile detail screen where the user is able to edit just details associated with their profile. And they, from this screen, they are also able to add a profile picture. So right now we're just going to choose from the gallery um, right here. And we are going to save that. And the profile picture, as we can see, pops up on the main screen. Now, as said previously, the user can have more than one profile. So just going to add another profile real quick. Now, with having more than one profile, the user is able to um, access between the two profiles uh, differently. And each individual profile will have their own food tracked on said profile. So as we just finish out, finishing up this profile, um, I'm going to have the app create macronutrients for it. And as we can see, going onto the profile screen, since we made def the John profile, the default profile um, in the initial create profile screen, John appears here as the default. So we can quick switch to John and we're back to John. And as we can see, Andrew is the, la is the last used profile. Now we can also see all profiles that have been created. So we can switch back to John, which is the current profile. But as we, as we currently, we can go to Andrew. And as we see on the home screen, there are no items for Andrew. So we can just add an item for that real quick. And as we can see, Andrew only has a banana. Now, passing you over to Josh for the search functionality. So if the user does not know what they want to eat that night for dinner or for lunch or for breakfast or whatever meal they want, 
they can navigate to the search screen where they can search for any recipe that they desire. So maybe someone wants to eat chicken for dinner one night. They can type chicken into the search bar and search for any recipe they choose that might contain chicken. Now, as the app calls the API, a loading animation will come up and disappear once the chicken recipes appear. So if the person wants to scroll down to find a chicken recipe that they like, maybe they want to eat baked chicken that night. So they click on the recipe and they can see that this is a main course dish that is an American food, has 158 calories, um, 0.2 carbs, 29.3 grams of protein, and 3.4 grams of fats. They can also see the ingredients for each recipe that they click on and can also view instructions by clicking on the instruction button for how to cook the recipe. If the user, though, does not know anything about what they want to eat that night or just doesn't have an idea of what to search, they can also hit the suggest button to get the app to suggest recipes for them. The app will search their, for their macronutrient goals and their calorie goals and then will suggest good recipes for them based on the goals that the user set on the profile screen. So if the user wants to, they can scroll down to find a recipe that's suitable for them. And maybe they have one night where they want to eat skirt steak and hanger steak. They can click on the recipe and again, they'll be taken to a screen that has the attributes for that recipe, including its macronutrients and its number of calories. And then they can also see the ingredients for the recipe and be able to view instructions as well. Now, if the user does not want to see any recipes, but they want to go out to eat that night, they can also view restaurants near their current location. By um, allowing the app to see their current location, the user can view the restaurants that are near them as the app will pull up all of the restaurants um, within a five mile radius of their current location on a map. And it will add a marker to the map that the user can then select to see which restaurants are which, um, which marker. If the user wants to click on a restaurant, they can see the, um, the distance from their, their current location as well as the rating for the restaurant. If the user finds a restaurant that they want to go eat at, they can also click on the restaurant in the list below to view the restaurant's hours, the restaurant's address, the distance from the user, the phone number, the number of reviews, and the food specialties that the restaurant makes for their food. So if the user wants any additional information, they can also click the button below to view the Yelp page for that restaurant. So this is the Aurora app, and thank you all so much for watching our presentation.